Did you know that Destro has a cousin? And his cousin is also evil. His name is Darklon. Let's talk about him. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics, whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it so you and your friends don't miss the content I upload just like this every few days. Let's jump into the story. Darklon's family roots stretch back as far as Destro's and the Destro clan. Darklon, as file card says, is the last of a long line of privateers, mercenaries, and investment bankers. As is customary in the Destro clan, Darklon too wears a metal helmet on his head. He looks like something that an Imperial Death Trooper or a Shadow Stormtrooper would wear in Star Wars. I also can't help but think of Lord Humongous from Mad Max when I see the back of his head, which makes sense if you consider the Dreadnoughts history. His helmet, as we'll find out later, is surgically attached to his head. For the family history, we have to take a look at Destro's file card, which says, quote, One of Destro's ancestors started the family fortune by selling arms to both sides during the English Civil War. One ancestor was caught in the act by Cromwell's men and was made to wear an uncomfortable steel mask. They had to punish him, but they still wanted his weapons. Since that time, the lairds of the Destro clan have worn the mask with pride and passed it down to succeeding generations. The Evader box says that wherever there's a confrontation between two enemies, you can bet your bottom dollar Darklon and his Evader will be there to supply both sides with enough arms to keep the battle going for a long time. Building off of that idea and for added details on its pre-Cobra exploits, we turn to Action Force and his intelligence profile. Darklon and his relatives were motivated solely by greed and not by any moral or ideological point of view. They were embedded deep in the world of wet work, smuggling, international arms dealing, mercenary work, and investment banking. U.S. intelligence agencies first became aware of Darklon when his organization was reported to be selling arms to Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge in Cambodia and the Padat Lao in Laos during the mid-70s. Darklon left Asia after that, wanted by both U.S. and Vietnamese officials. He used his connections in the region to purchase Silkworm cruise missiles, tanks, and F-6 and F-7 fighters, which are Chinese versions of the Soviet-era MiG-21 fishbed, and then he sold those to Iran during the Iraq-Iran War. As is true to his character in playing both sides, he was also helping Iraq build up their chemical weapons cache at the same time. He then sold Exocet missiles to the Argentinians during the Falklands War, which made him a target for British intelligence. And all these activities afforded Darklon enough money to build a cast iron fortress high in the Swiss Alps, from which he would direct his private army of mercenaries. This is when he decided to also re-establish contact with Mars Industries, the company that his third cousin Destro ran. Destro and Darklon, one serious and one sarcastic, would often butt heads, but regardless, they worked together with Darklon often leading the Iron Grenadiers on behalf of his cousin. Darklon's reach spread far and wide from South Africa to Iran to El Salvador, where he would continue recruiting troops and freelancers for good rates and good benefits too, I'm sure. Eventually, Darklon took over not a job, not a company, but an entire country, and named it after himself. It was called Darklonium. That's some Doctor Doom level evil. Darklon first appeared in comic books in Larry Hama's Real American Hero comic book series issue 88 in the summer of 89. Incidentally, this issue was later reprinted in 1991 as part of Action Force 1 in Norway, a thick book that came with issue 87, the previous issue, along with Special Mission 17. So in issue 88, the Joes were in W-Land, which neighbors Darklonium, because the W-Landers had just bought surplus Maulers, APCs, and Awe Strikers after Darklon tried to sell them some junk Cobra surplus. At the same time, Darklon was with Destro, Baroness, and Mindbender, and a model holding a Cobra Cola, the Pepsi to the Joes Joe Cola, or vice versa, at an empty military surplus sale. Destro said he had a business proposition for Darklon, something to upgrade the equipment and make it invisible to radar. And back in WLAN, we learned that Darklon had bought dozens of X-30 conquests from a Pentagon-friendly nation prior to a coup. So Mindbender showed him the Pythonization tech. They rolled over the border into WLAN, and some Joes passed by in Camaro, and Darklon thought they were smugglers, and that the shape of the Camaro might be a good stealth configuration. Anyways, he was defeated by the Camaro and Snake Eyes wearing his sunglasses at night. And it turns out that Liederkranz from WLAN liked all of this happening and wanted to buy some of the Python equipment instead of fighting. So it was pretty quickly diffused. In issue 90 on the steps of the former Lodge Hall, now the cryptic order of benevolent reptilian apostates, Cobra, in Broca Beach, Darklon shot Road Pig full of trank darts with his weapon. And at the Cobra meeting inside the building, Destro showed an a Cobra org chart 
that lists Darklawn and Mindbender as quote-unquote sales and marketing under Destro. Mindbender says indignantly, you want someone of my renown to work with a used tank salesman? They have this funny back and forth. Darklawn later had his troops shoot down a Russian transport plane full of October Guard and G.I. Joes, and they managed to get off the tarmac as Darklawn and his forces pursued them into the surrounding jungle. And then, in the middle of the chase, he just wanted to stop so they could chop down all the rainforest, which they did, but then they also raked up all the leaves and made it look like the lunar surface. And speaking of the lunar surface, Darklon showed up again in issue 146, an issue which largely takes place on the moon, as the Joes are once again called to W-Land. More references to the previous border conflict, but now the concern is nearby Barovia. And as Destro and Cobra Commander plot against W-Land from Transcarpathia, fire a missile. Darklon was using a telescope to spy on the border and muse his maniacal musings. And just at that moment, the missile that Destro fired slammed into the keep, seemingly killing Darklon in the destruction in the rubble. And when Darklon fell, so too nearly did the entire country to Cobra. But it's revealed in issue 167 that Darklon survived the attack. Baron has said that the dungeon in Castle Destro was converted to this hardened bunker as a showroom for dictators, so he was able to stay alive, and then he kept a low profile, letting everyone keep thinking he was dead, and continued on with the family business from there, now running up against Destro as a competitor. A few issues later found Flint, LJ, and Roadblock on a mission in Darklonia to capture Darklon, which they do, but on the way out, LJ and Darklon were both shot, and Flint had to choose one, he thought, to live, so he chose LJ. After crash landing the Tomahawk on the USS flag, medics took them both away for treatment, and they later brought Darklon to the pit to be held. Destro told Duke that Darklon had planned to sell a Krytron, a prototype nuclear trigger device that was stolen from Mars Industries. Soon after, Psychout informed their prisoner that he was to be turned over to The Hague for war crimes. Darklon escaped custody, but it turns out that this was part of Duke's plan so that they could track Darklon. And this is when we learn that Darklon's helmet is surgically implanted to his head with cerebral and optical implants rooted deeply. Outback, Ambush, and Muskrat chased him into the surrounding foothills of the base, and at night, with a sniper rifle and just as he was about to shoot Muskrat, Ambush popped a flare and then low light shot the rifle out of his hands, and Darklon got away, but finally, we saw him in the comics use his evader. And he escapes on it. He went back to Darklonia and then went to Benzene to sell the Krytron to Colonel Farood which is just when Baroness and Destro showed up to crash that meeting, but their effort confirmed for Farood that the Krytron was real. But Farood wanted to do a field test out at a prison compound, so this is when Destro met with the Ministry of Defense for neighboring Trushal Abysme to sell another Krytron, thereby maintaining nuclear balance in the area. And so he continues on, unscrupulous, uncaring, and snarky, even as the snake hunt in summer 2020 beats on. He showed up in the final issue of Special Mission 28 where he's scolding Cobra Commander for letting the Joes set up a stealth base in Punta del Mucosa which would threaten their posture in Sierra Gordo. He did make it into a big coloring book by Golden in 1989. In the book, the Joes are protecting a lab, a secret lab that is, in the desert so they can launch a space shuttle to build a moon base when Destro and Darklon, who seems to keep changing his look, attack. Skidmark fought them and they hurt Skidmark and took the scientist lady to Destro's jail, so the Joe team rescued her with the space shuttle, which I guess is SSTO, because there's no launch complex, and as they rocket skywards, Darklon and Destron shook their fists angrily at the sky. The first page of Darklon is basically the image from the invader box, so I guess now you have the story that goes with that box art. Darklon was not in the animated series, neither Sunbow nor Deke. He was animated, however, for a commercial in 1989 that featured Sergeant Slaughter and the Joe's Arctic Blast, and some face camouflage that came in, especially marked packages. Darklon's first action figure was released, typo and all, in 1989, labeling him as the Evader Driver. Designed by Mark Pennington, a contemporary to Ron Rudat, Darklon was an entirely new sculpt. He came packaged with, of course, the Evader vehicle, and in the 89 catalog, he wasn't listed individually. He was strictly listed with the Evader vehicle. It was to help sell the vehicle as a higher price point product. There was a few vehicle exclusive figures. The box art on the European Evader is different as it shows the clamshell canopy with the top up and Darklon doing a Captain Morgan pose. It's the same image they use for the catalogs in Europe. Fun School's late 90s release of the Evader also had slightly different box art. Most notably is that Darklon himself had on green pants instead of red for the India release, and his helmet is very different. Not really sure what's going on there, but this follows with Fun School's recreating the box art and figures and card art themselves. Oh, and you get a random figure with this vehicle, not Darklon. 
since there was not an Indian Darklon. Anyway, this was the start, really. The second year of the sub-teams push and release slash repaints from Battle Force 2000 to Python Patrol to Tiger Force, Night Force, Slaughter's Marauders, Scrap Patrol, Star Brigade, Iron Grenadiers. There was a lot. So something interesting happened in 1994. I suppose Hasbro had a bunch of dead stock of Darklon laying around because they sold the mold, along with a few others, to this company called Olmec Toys, who created a figure for their Bronze Bombers line. Olmec was this company founded by a Harvard grad who, she said once, she founded because she couldn't find a black superhero for her son. Apparently, though, the figures were repainted and repackaged in Lao Gai, a Chinese army prison factory. But then after trying to get a factory off the ground in Richmond, Virginia, and with the U.S. government, Bill Clinton and his administration, and Chinese officials after her, she disappeared and the government seized all the Malcolm X figures and bronze bomber figures along with all her other assets. It's a crazy story. I guess the U.S. government finally caught up with Darklon. The line was advertised as early as 95 as seen in this Ebony Magazine article piece, but sold in 1997. This version of Darklon was called Craze Blaze, and he is painted purple and mustard. Craze Blaze's real name is Carlton Tulum. This is actually a lot of people's favorite version of Darklon. His next figure was released in 2012 at the G.I. Joe convention that year as part of the Iron Grenadiers Ground Assault 2-pack, which also came with Sergeant Major Duncan. He was also in the 6-pack Creo set with Pimp Daddy Destro, Voltar, and some Iron Grenadiers, although they spelled his name without the K. Whoops. The last Darklon figure hit the pegs and the racks, well, not really, in 2017. It was a DT Seek figure for the figure subscription service. So, to sum up Darklon, we again turn to the file cards. Completely unhindered by his ideology or ethics, Darklon is motivated purely by greed. His telephone solicitors have been known to drum up business for his mercenary army by offering reasonable hourly rates and cash rebates. And with that, we come to the end of another video. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Turn on your notifications, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.